Okay, where are all my menopausal women at? Let's talk about moodiness. How many of us are feeling a little moody? Put, put it in the comments. I know I'm not alone. What I know about the menopausal experience is you're not just losing three hormones, you're losing up to 12 neurochemicals. It is a massive neurochemical shift. And in this massive neurochemical shift, you're gonna see these wild mood swings. Now, if you don't know about the history of hormones and how they change as we go through menopause, our calming hormone progesterone that stimulated a neurotransmitter called GABA actually starts to decline in our 30s. So we start to get some hints of those little irritability moments. But then in our 40s, we see estrogen go on a wild ride. She's up, she's down, she's up, she's down. And so we feel great one day and the next day we don't feel so great. Put in the comments if that's you. And I know, you know, if you're watching this with a spouse, that can be incredibly confusing as to why we're, you're, we're smiley and sweet on one day and the next day, not so much because when estrogen goes up and down, estrogen stimulated some major mood molecules. And I'm gonna give you two of them that you know quite well. One is dopamine. Estrogen had a major impact on your dopamine production. The second one is serotonin. Estrogen had this incredible impact on serotonin. So when estrogen goes away, you start to lose these happiness, motivating, um, excitatory neur neurotransmitters. When progesterone goes away, you lose the calming neurotransmitter. And that neurochemical mix makes us a little bitchy. And if you're feeling a little bitchy, put it in the comments. It's always good to call ourselves out. But I want you to know you're not alone. That a 2008 study in the Journal of Psychiatry and Neuroscience showed that 70% of us are neurochemically bitchy, that we are suddenly irritable and angry. And I want to bring you down two paths as to why that is happening. One is this neurochemical path, and the other one is gonna be a really cool around our life choices path. So stay tuned for the end of this video for me to go through that. So what's happening? Let's, let's break down serotonin first. So I always think, and, and, and dopamine and serotonin are like, they go hand in hand. So dopamine, I, I used to always tell my patients, dopamine takes you to the goal, it gets you going, but then once you achieve the goal, it's not the neurotransmitter that tells you, good job, it is the neurotransmitter that says, let's do that again. So dopamine is a motivator and, it's, and it keeps you going and it is what we call the molecule of more, not the molecule of enough. Now serotonin comes in right after dopamine gets her hit. Serotonin comes in and says, you did a good job. You should feel good about yourself. Now let's go back to your menopausal journey. Estrogen's going down. Dopamine and, and, and serotonin are going down. So all of a sudden you're not motivated, you're not focused, and even when something great happens to you, your brain isn't giving you signals of, oh, that was pretty good, happy that happened. This is causing so many of us to be irritable and angry because we're not neurochemically equipped to handle the day-to-day -day life that we have created. So there was a 22 review in the Journal of Pharmacology, Biochemistry and Behavior that noticed that actually serotonin is the most important neurotransmitter for regulating moods. And so it went on to talk about that when serotonin drops, you can feel depressed, you can feel isolated. And this is why a lot of times they will prescribe you a medication that will upregulate serotonin. That medication, by the way, highly controversial, sometimes works, doesn't work. Um, and I think it's not just, depression isn't just the loss of serotonin, but depression can be the loss of other aspects of your life that we'll talk about here at the end. Now, what we do know is that estrogen increases serotonin. And there was a 2013 paper done in current psychiatry research and reviews that estrogen specifically regulates serotonin in your amygdala. Now the amygdala is in the center of your brain. 
It is your limbic system and it is the place that is the control of moods and emotions. So when estrogen goes down, so does serotonin. Now, who's regulating the moods? This is why you looked at us wrong and all of a sudden we're upset because we don't, we're not neurochemically equipped to be able to handle stress as well as we used to. Now, don't worry, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to bring serotonin back. Now, dopamine, dopamine is really interesting because dopamine also, estrogen also influenced dopamine. And there was a 2011 study that found in the Journal of Neuroscience that found that when that estrogen and dopamine will rise and fall together. Now in this study, super interesting, they took 79 women and they put them through a series of cognitive tests. And they found, they did those cognitive tests at different parts of the menstrual cycle. And they found that when estrogen was lower, that actually the woman perf uh, performed worse on the cognitive test. Now what does that mean about those of us that are going through the menopause experience as estrogen is going down? And well, again, I'm gonna give you a solution here in a moment. But what I want you to know is that dopamine is the motivator. It is the molecule of more. It's the one propelling you to a goal. It's the one that even makes you wanna feel like you wanna be happy. It is such a powerful neurotransmitter. And then when you hit that moment, like you hit a goal or you, you, you achieve what you wanna achieve, serotonin comes in and says, good job. So the way I used to always explain it to my patients is I would say, dopamine is the, what gets you to the goal and serotonin is what really celebrates you. So we want both of these neurotransmitters to be active in our brain in order for us to be happy. So there are a lot of different ways we can use our life to bring these neurochemicals back. So you don't, ha as estrogen and progesterone are going down, you don't have to just see your moods go down. What you would behoove you to do is to actually look at how do I bring in some dopamine and serotonin rich activities into my world so that I can make these neurochemicals on my own. I don't need estrogen to make these neurochemicals. I can make them on my own. So here's one of the first ways and that I love to make serotonin and it is through socializing. Yep, uh, hopefully you know I'm an extrovert and what we know about serotonin is that she comes out when we're socializing with other people, especially nice people, especially people we love. And there was a 2017 study in PLOS One that found that Sarah, check this out, serotonin jumped 169% when people were in a positive setting with friends. Think about that. Okay, let's put this into your life. You're 45 years old, all of a sudden you're really moody, everybody's upsetting you. Surely there's a few people that haven't upset you. You have a few besties. You go and hang out with these besties and all of a sudden you're having this neurochemical experience in the socializing with your bestie that is upregulating serotonin and bringing serotonin back and giving you that happiness boost that you are so desperately looking for when estrogen left the building. Now we also know there's another way, a really cool way to get serotonin and that's through service, acts of service. So I, I used to always tell my kids when they were young, if you're having a bad day, go help somebody. One of the best ways to make sure, overcome a bad day is to go into a place of giving to other people. And, and this isn't just personal, Personal advice, there actually are, are is science showing that a 2013 review in the Annals of New York Academy of Science noted that helping others boost your serotonin, um, and if you do it once a week, um, and you do it with other people that you love, you're getting double the dose of serotonin. So volunteering in community, hanging out with people you love, getting away from thinking about your own life and giving to other people and now we have brought serotonin back in and now you don't need to worry about where estrogen is in her pro progression through menopause you're in control of your moods guess what age like a girl my new book it's ready for pre-orders and this is the most personal book i have ever written 
and I'm so excited to bring it to you. If you are looking to reinvent yourself through the menopause process, or maybe you're on the other side and you're still looking for that reinvention, I'm gonna show you exactly why menopause works in your favor and how you can make it your greatest moment yet. Age like a girl. Okay, let's talk about dopamine. So dopamine can be stimulated by pursuing a meaningful goal. And there was a 2019 review in the Consulting Psychology Journal that found that low dopamine made it harder for people to pursue their goals. Okay, well, as menopausal women, we got low dopamine. But if they stuck with it, and over and over and over again, they kept going after their goal, within a couple of weeks, their dopamine levels started to rise. Okay, let me tell you about something that I did that took a hell of a lot of dopamine. I wrote Age Like a Girl, and it's ready right now for pre-order, by the way. And I can tell you throughout this whole process of writing this book, I wanted to give up about a thousand times. But I had a goal. I knew what day that it needed to be turned in. I knew how, it, how many word count, you know, what the word count was that I needed to get to my publisher. And I knew that I had to keep my focus on the goal. And there would be days I would sit down at the computer and every cell in my body was screaming like, no, 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 don't do this, I hate this, I don't wanna keep doing this. And by the end of the day, I was always happier. That is dopamine, sticking with a goal, seeing it through, something that's meaningful. This book's really meaningful, not just to me, but I know it's gonna be incredibly meaningful for a lot of women. So I just kept my focus on that. And that is how I brought dopamine in to keep me motivated for the next day. Now, there's other types of goals you can do. You don't have to take on writing a book. I'm not sure I even recommend it. But you can start to get new goal challenges in your life that will not just help bring in dopamine because dopamine loves going for a goal, but if it's new, if it's novel, if it has a challenge to it, all of a sudden you've amplified your dopamine secretion from your brain. So you could do, try a new gym routine. You could all of a sudden start walking 10,000 steps. I can tell you recently a friend and I started to do a 10,000 a step um, a day challenge. And it was something that was new and it was exciting. I was doing it with one of my favorite humans. And so I was getting serotonin. I had the dopamine and it was really motivating me to go the next day another 10 and another 10. You could also start to learn a new hobby. I'll tell you, I just took up surfing and I'm learning how to surf. I took a, an art class a, a couple of months ago, learning how to draw. All of these new activities brings dopamine back online. So it's the mood swings happen neurochemically because you didn't get the message that you had to go seek this, these neurotransmitters. They don't just come to you anymore. You gotta actually go out and do daily activities that bring these neurotransmitters back online. And socializing, acts of service, newness, challenges, novel things, learning new activities, all of that is not just creating a fun life, but it's actually creating a neurochemical reaction within your body. Now, last thing I wanna say, so don't go anywhere. So Age Like a Girl is coming out, it's available for pre-order, and there are three parts to it. And in the third part, I show you how menopause is our transformational moment. And after working with a lot of menopausal women, I can tell you that one of the challenges that menopausal women have as they move through those menopausal years is all of a sudden things they used to like, they don't like anymore. Like I'll use myself as an example. I used to be okay with a messy house. Not anymore. I could have some stuff on the countertops. Nope, not anymore. There was a massive behavior change. And for a lot of women, when they go through this menopausal experience and they lose these neurochemicals, they actually can see routines and habits and things that they do that no longer work for them. So what, the next time you're feeling depressed, what I really encourage you to do is acknowledge that there's a neurochemical shift. Ask yourself if there is a lifestyle tool that you can bring in to help stimulate that neurochemical. I got lots of lifestyle tools in here for you. And then the last thing is ask yourself if maybe you're depressed because there's an aspect of your life you no longer wanna live, or there's an aspect 
of your life that you no longer want to engage in and that it's time to maybe leave, leave a job, it's time to change personal trainers, maybe you need to change your therapist, maybe there is something you've created, maybe you have to stop doing everything for your children. There's something in your life that is no longer working for you and mix that with this neurochemical shift and you are going to start to become depressed. So dive into the lifestyle, make changes there and start to reorganize things in your life that may no longer fit. Because as you will learn when you get into age like a girl, what you will learn is that menopause is a returning home to ourselves. It is our moment where we finally live life on our terms. We stop being so obsessed with pleasing everybody around us and we start to focus on pleasing ourselves. And I promise you, if you focus on pleasing yourself first, the moodiness goes away. So more, more detail in Age Like a Girl, but for the sake of this video, I hope that helps. So if you love this video, you're gonna wanna check out this video. It's kind of the sucky part of menopause is that we get a toxic dump. So when we look at unwinding the menopausal weight, we've got to look at making you insulin sensitive and look at detox.